Hey everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studios. We are here with the Tangle a Day Calendar April Flip Through. And here we go with one, two, and three. I try to look for uh, patterns that I, I could find their names. So these three have names, and I guess April's kind of a mixed bag. There's some, I'm thinking about half the month I don't have names on things. Because when I went to look for them on Pinterest and do the step outs and that kind of stuff, there were no names for them. Okay, so here's the first three. There's a little really big contrast between um, one and three and two because these are very light delicate pen work and this is very heavy just you know kind of trudge through although I do like this kind of stuff I, I really I think it's a toss-up between these two which one I like better there's not enough interest in this one to hold my attention but I, I really like these two because it's a good contrast between the very light pen work and the very dark stuff all right, four, five, and six. What I tell you, it's a mixed bag. Three with names, three without. I like this one the best, number five. Although I do like doing these because they're very repetitive and it's calming. And this is very calming also, but I like this because the visual interest is there for me. Seven, eight, nine. Two out of three have names. Again, this is basic, plain. I can see this kind of stuff I consider to be background for what I do if I draw flowers. This would be filler for me. This was fun. It was kind of an optical illusion sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure I did it exactly the way it showed. It was really easy to do, though. But I like it. And I enjoyed doing this one, too, because this was a challenge for me because of the optical illusion type stuff where it's got depth and it, you know, it shows a lot of movement. I, I find these to be a challenge for my brain. My, somehow or another, one side of the brain does not like these while the other side does, so they kind of fight. And I struggle with these. That's why I'm trying to do more of them, because I want to overcome that fear or overcome that inability to do them. Three with names. Yay, I want to roll. Um, this one right here, I was watching TV. <laughs> and you have to put, and you do an initial kind of cross line, and it's a double lines here. I did it right on this one, and then the other three, I don't know what happened. I looked up after watching TV for an hour and looked down what I was doing. I was like, oh, no. And it was too late to go back and fix anything, so I left it. This one went horribly wrong, but, you know, like I said, it's a learning process. <laughs> I don't think this looks anything like the picture, but, hey, I just kept going. Because once you start, what are you going to do? I thought about using gesso, and I thought, no, I'm not going to lie. It was messed up. End of story. 13, 14, 15, no names, but I had a better three-day period. <laughs> I like these kinds of things where you can use shading to bring something out, something forward, and push something else in the background. I like this kind of stuff. Very simple, not a lot of foo-foo to this. I like this one because I see I, I smile. I don't know why, but I, I see lots of grins in here and eyeballs. This one amuses me. All right, so these three have names. This was unexciting for me. I, I don't know why, but this just didn't do a thing for me. This one really did. I really enjoyed doing this one because I like that it has variety, and it's a different kind of variety, a different sort of slant to the same idea of doing things in columns and doing you know things like this. I really enjoyed doing this one. This, number 18, was really only about the border. It wasn't about anything else. It was a border, and I wanted to try it out, and I liked it. So I think I might go back later and paste, do a glue collage type thing inside here to give the border more validation there. But I did like it. 19, 20, 21, only one has a name. I feel kind of ambivalent about all three of these. Kind of eh. If I had to pick one that I liked of the three, I would pick this one because I got to use shading. And I did enjoy doing all those little bubbles, that mindless thing. I enjoy doing the mindless work. Eh. It's okay. And meh. It's okay. 
but I really like doing this one. I am my favorite one on this page is number 22. What can I say? I really like flowers and I like doing doodle flowers. I like round things. I like dots. Everything that I like about doodling is right there. I like doing the bows. It's called loop, L-U-P-E. I like doing these. These are so simple, but it teaches you how to put something, you know, how to interweave things. It's an optical illusion, but I enjoy doing it. I'm not always really successful at making it look that way, but I do try and I enjoy trying. This one, I, I have no explanation for. I tried this one and I still am not sure I understand it. So I stopped. I didn't want to mess it up anymore. And I was thinking about gesso overing it. And I, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. So that's all I got for 24. I might go back and try again. But I think what I will do is I will do it with pencil first before I try it with pen. Because this, to me, looks like a disaster. But, you know, I learn more from mistakes like this than I do total successes. Because even though I like this, it doesn't. it's not always a challenge to my brain. This was a total challenge that just mess me up. <laughs> Alrighty. 25, 26, 27. This one's my favorite one. I do like the black on this, but I need a little more interest here. And this one was an experiment with two pens. I used the Faber-Castell black brush pen on here, and I use a Micron number eight. And the reason I did this is because you had to fill in these lines, and I wanted to see what it would look like with a brush pen as opposed to a Micron. And I prefer the Micron. I think the Micron gives you a little more controlled than the brush pen. The brush pen, I think, is more for filling in places. Like, if I was going to fill this solid black, I would use the brush pen for this and not waste my Micron. But this, I think, would have been much nicer if I had stuck with the Micron. But, you know, it was an experiment. I learned something from it. So now I know if I need total control, it's got to be a Micron. Fill in stuff. I can use the Faber-Castell um, black brush pen. Live and learn. 28, 29, and 30. Um, 28 messed me up. It's one of those over-under things like the bows. But for some reason, I could not grasp the concept. I could not, and there were step-outs, all kinds of them. But I did not understand the step-outs. I was also watching TV while I did this, so I think I was half watching TV and then going back to this and trying to figure this out and then heard something from the TV and... I decide maybe I cannot do this kind of stuff while I'm watching TV. <laughs> I love these. They remind me of Japanese lanterns. I don't know why, but I really like these. I think these are very cool. This is not what I expected it to turn out looking like. But I kept going because I thought, well, maybe I'll get better. Nope. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> but you know, you just keep going because you got to learn something new. You got to practice. If you don't mess up, you'll never appreciate the successes. And that is the month of April. So I will be back next month with the month. I'll be back in June for the month of May flip. I have one thing to say. Hey, Polly. Bye, y'all.